benchmark, what you call it? Benchmark uh, thermology? No. Methodology. Yeah, methodology. <laughs> benchmark process. Yes. That's a better word for me. Hi everybody, I'm Marcus, the founder of Aftershock and we're going to be looking at the AMD 5000 series launch. We have with us Julian Tech TM. Um, basically, we wanted to find the right methodology for testing this CPU and giving you guys the answers to some of the questions you might have. Because I'm number one tech YouTuber. <laughs> okay, yes, uh, so today I'm here to help with the video production and talk a little bit about the benchmark process and how I do it on my channel. So we have both a 5950X and the 5600X and we're going to compare it with the 3600XT Correct, correct, correct uh, So how we're going to do it is that we're going to use everything the same Okay, the motherboard, RAM So we're just going to just swap out CPU so there's no other variations of um, components. We're going to play real games. Two games that I want to see, CSGO and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, it's quite easy because they already have their own benchmark tool. But for games that don't have a benchmark tool like CSGO, basically we're going to do very exciting things. Go in a map with no bots and go up and down a road. Yeah, so just up, down, up, down, up, down. Essentially, um, this, the key takeaway from AMD's presentation of the 5000 mm. series, I think many of you may have caught that event, is that they touted the improvement to single core performance. Right. So what does that mean for the real world users such as yourself? Essentially, single core core performance is a big factor for frames per second in terms of games, especially at a lower resolution where the games are more CPU bound. Mm. So for people that are looking at Valorant, League of Legends, CSGO, you know, to get the most stable, high frame rate, um, the single core performance does matter. We've mm. historically seen that it does matter and we want to see in the real world just how much of a difference the 5000 series makes compared to its predecessor. Also looking at an AAA title, we want to see how the 5600X fares against its predecessor as well as against current flagship models. Because based on many of the leaks we have been looking at, uh, there are a lot of leaks where they claim that the single core performance figures of the 5600X is almost on par with many of the flagships. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I guess we can go on to the results. So before we take a dive into the benchmarks, just something to note is that we did these tests on our fixed benchmarks with a RTX 3080. So results will also uh, depend on your configuration like your motherboard, your graphics card and so on and so forth. But the aim is to get a good representation of how these chips perform in the real world. Taking a quick glance at the 5950X versus the 3950X, we're also seeing amazing results at 1080p and 1440p. And this is a big deal for many users who use a 5950X as both a CPU for gaming and creating. Whereas in the past, for users getting a 3950X, it would very much just be for creator work, whereas a 3700X or whatnot might be more optimal for gaming. With the new 5000 series, the 5950X performs really well for both worlds. We also took a look at a wide range of synthetic benchmarks for these chips. And essentially, in a nutshell, what we found from these benchmarks was that the 5600X performed much better in single core performance metrics than the 3600XT. In multi-core, it beat it of course, but the difference is huge in single core performance. So AMD has essentially delivered really, really effectively on this promise. So first off, we're gonna be taking a look at Counter-Strike Go. So Counter-Strike Go is a eSports title, and here we're comparing the 5950X and the 5600X with their predecessors, the 3600XT and the 3950X. Essentially what we saw here was absolutely mind-blowing. AMD claimed much better single core performance would basically deliver supremely higher frame rates in these titles where at a lower resolution, it will be very CPU bound. And boy, did they deliver. Looking at these frames, we're seeing a difference from about 200 FPS, from a jump from 500 FPS to 700 FPS. And this is just absolutely massive because on all other metrics, apart from average frame rate, for example, the frames per second at the various percentiles, we saw huge improvements as well, meaning not just in higher average FPS, but an overall smoother experience. So next up, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, a ray tracing enabled AAA title. And we wanted to see how these CPUs will make an impact at various resolutions in a, in a game with all the bells and whistles turned on. Essentially what we saw was amazing as well here, where the 5600X absolutely crushed the 3600XT with 170 FPS to 121 at Full HD, 1080p, 153 to 134 at 1440p, and not much of a difference at 4K, which we expected since at 4K it's mostly GPU bound. Essentially what this means for you as the user is that if you're building a PC solely for gaming, the 5600X is an excellent choice because it doesn't just 
beat its predecessor. It also performs extremely favorably against CPUs from the rival camp at a similar price point. So in a nutshell, from the data that we are seeing from these initial benchmarks, we think the 5600X is an amazing pairing if you're looking purely to game. It will still do decent at creator tasks, but with six cores and you know amazing single core performance, we're seeing awesome performance numbers and it'll make a great pairing um, together for 3070 or a 3080 if your ideal main usage is gaming. So from these preliminary observations for the 5950X, we think AMD has really delivered its promise on a top of the line CPU that performs in both games and creator tasks. We think users looking to build basically an ultimate PC for everything will find this CPU very attractive. We will be doing more tests on all four CPUs across the board in the near future. The 5600X, the 5800X, the 5900X, and the 5950X. And we look forward to sharing more information as we do more tests with you know, different motherboard and different GPU combinations. So thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, we hope you found this video really informative. We're quite impressed by the 5000 series CPUs. We think that really has changed the game to some extent for AMD. Being that traditionally up to now it's been really good in terms of multi-core performance, but now single-core performance looks awesome as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be doing more videos in the near future, so you can learn more about choosing the next chip for your next build. Uh, in the meantime, you can check out Julian Tech TM's page for more videos and analysis of the 5000 series. But what I take out of this 5000 series is that even though the 3000 series is not the best for gaming, people still prefer AMD. So imagine the 5000 series with the improvement, how people are going to think about this. I think it's going to be a seller. That's, cool. what I, that's what I think. So we're looking forward to see the consumer response yeah. and to see what kind of PCs they want to build with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can't, can't wait to see how the launch goes and what you guys think of the 5000 series once you guys get a hands on the 5000 series. Yeah. So thank you so much and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Ciao.